verse 106. The first seven stages are still of the mind, but here the eighth is imageless. The two stages, the ninth and the tenth, have still something to rest themselves on. The highest stage that is left belongs to me. I replied to a question in a comment recently. The comment was about the threefold training, the training of ethics, of morality, of meditation and wisdom. And didn't the Buddha teach this as the path to enlightenment? In fact, this threefold training can be broken down into what is known as the Eightfold Path. Didn't the Buddha teach this as the means to enlightenment? Well, I replied that from the point of view of these videos, there is no path to enlightenment. There is no training that will lead you to enlightenment. Then again, didn't the Buddha teach this? Well, the Buddha certainly taught the threefold training and the eightfold path. He taught the four noble truths about the truth of suffering and how the eightfold path is the way to remove the roots of suffering. And you can get involved as a Buddhist. You might think, well, I'm never going to get there. This is a good thing to do anyway. It will make me a better person. And that's fine. There are all sorts of reasons why people become Buddhists. And there's no need to argue with them. But if you're really interested in enlightenment, then we have to look a lot more closely at what's going on here. Did the Buddha follow the Eightfold Path to Enlightenment? Is that how the Buddha reached his enlightenment? Did he follow the Threefold Training towards Enlightenment? Well, I've covered all this before. The Buddha didn't follow any particular teaching to get to Enlightenment. He sat down under the Bodhi tree and he remembered his Enlightenment. He remembered it. And after he remembered it, he spent several weeks consolidating it. The very words that are used should give us a clue. Awakening, realization, enlightenment. How do you train to awaken? It's something that happens. It's something you stumble upon. It's something that dawns on you. It's a dawning. And once this dawning has happened, you need to properly realize and appreciate what it is. And then you work on consolidation. This is enlightenment practice, spiritual practice. This is the work of the Bodhisattva. So there's this contrast in Buddhism between this idea of different stages of practice, different levels of realization, and then full enlightenment. It doesn't work that way. You don't hear stories, although I'm quite happy to be contradicted here, of people that follow the path of their teacher, follow all the practices, they meditate for so many years and they get enlightened. No, the stories of enlightenment are about people that it just happens to. They might be walking down the street, getting off their bed, sitting on the toilet even, or um, they hear a verse from the scriptures, they hear a verse from a Buddhist text, 
That's what triggers enlightenment. That's the initial enlightenment event. So bearing all that in mind, let's look at verse 106. Verse 106 is about the Bhumis. These are the stages of the Bodhisattva path. And I first mentioned them back in video 17, which was about verse 16. And I referred to the article on Wikipedia about this, which I recommend. And that's what I'm going to be looking at now, this article on Wikipedia. I'll put a link to it in the notes below the video. The article on the Bhumis tells us that the Bodhisattva's path of awakening in the Mahayana tradition progresses through ten hierarchically arranged stages referred to as the Bodhisattva Bhumis. The Sanskrit term Bhumi literally means ground or foundation, since each stage represents a level of attainment and serves as a basis for the next one. Each level marks a definite advancement in one's training that is accompanied by progressively greater power and wisdom. So we get this idea of a development, don't we? And there are ten of them. Although, Verse 106 indicates that there's 11, and I think there's a little bit of a joke going on here. And we need to approach this with a lightness of spirit, because the whole concept of the training, of spiritual training, of a path, is taken to such a ludicrous extreme in the exposition of these ten bhumis, that if you're taking this as a prescriptive path to enlightenment, as a manual for enlightenment, you might as well give up now. You might as well give up. Now I've looked at the original text for this, which is called the Dasa Bhumika Sutra, the Sutra of the Ten Bhumis. And it's part of this extraordinary text called the Avatamsaka Sutra. And these ten Bhumis are exquisitely described. And it seems to me, rather than being a prescription that we must follow, because it's utterly impossible, it takes eons of practice. Each level consists of many sub-levels and many additional vows that you must take and additional paths that you must follow in order to proceed to the next level. So if, if you're to take this as a prescription to follow, as instructions, you might as well give up. What it is though, it is a celebration. It is a celebration of spiritual practice. It is a celebration of enlightenment practice. The ten Bhumis are nothing more than what we are doing when we practice. I'm going to show this in a separate video. I'm going to point this out in the next video. I'll point this out in some detail. But if we do take it too seriously, if we do feel that this is what we must do, and we might as well give up on it in this lifetime because it takes eons of eons of practice, then we should bear in mind what the Buddha says here. In verse 106, the highest stage that is left belongs to me. Well, there is no highest stage that is left. There's only the realization of what verse 105 says, that the, abo the abodes and stages of Buddhahood are established in the mind only. So if you realize mind only, then that's it. The 11th stage isn't a stage at all. The 11th stage is giving up on the whole idea of a path. This should come as a relief because the path is impossible. It's been taken to a ridiculous extreme and you must see this for yourself. 
we must realize this. We go for the eleventh non-existent Bhumi, the one that belongs to the Buddha. We step directly into it. But I'll say more about that after we've finished our exploration of the Bhumis according to the Wikipedia article. And I'll do that in the next video.